Make a track is a really out there training scenario. It's pretty good for getting a lot of gems for gacha pulls really quickly if you need them because you'll be doing races a lot. I had never played it before the production of this video began, so if any of this information is wrong, you can blame my friend who walked me through it. Here's a picture of him. The regular goals you have during this training, such as placing first in races or getting a prerequisite amount of fans, are gone in favor of getting funny points. It deceives you for the first bit, though, as you're training and winning your debut race like normal. Then shit gets real. First, you'll have to get 60 points from the race menu. You can check how many points in nondescript shop currency you get here. You might need to do a little bit of training, but at this point, you should be able to win a race that your horse girl can actually handle, so you might want to make note of their competence competencies beforehand. I never intended to turn this into a, oh, use this horse girl scenario, but El Condor Pasa specializes in mile and medium distances and is mildly competent at long distances and dirt races, so if your goal is to do a lot of races and get a lot of gems, then she's a good option for this. You'll also be given access to the shop. The shop here gets a lot of items that are given out randomly, so here's a breakdown of everything and when to use it before we really get into it. <gasps> Notepads, pamphlets, and a scrolls all increase stats. You want to buy these and use them immediately, like so, to increase your stat points since moments for training come at a premium using this strategy. We've got some medicines here that increase energy and motivation. We'll be using these a lot during the time your horse girl is at the beach, which are the only parts of the scenario that are dedicated to trainings. These medicines increase your energy, these ones increase your maximum energy, this one raises your energy but lowers your motivation one level, and cupcakes raise your motivation. If you can use the green drink and a cupcake at the same time, then that would be ideal. These bond items are good to get, but more so the cat food as it increases the chairwoman's bond. The requirement to get a skill as well as increase the level of your horse girl's personal skill later is to have her support bar at least three full, so it's always good to get that and use it immediately if she isn't reaching that bar. I don't use the barbecue carrots, but it increases support bars a bit as well. These four items give you conditions that you can utilize while training, so most of them don't really come into play. I'd say if you can get this one, which lowers the training fail rate, and this one that decreases skill cost, you're probably fine. All these items cure bad conditions, which saves you a trip to the nurse's office, I guess. These postcard looking things increase your training levels, but they're pretty expensive. If you can get them, then sure, get them, but I usually don't mess with them. The whistle is helpful because it'll shuffle support cards around, so if you get stuck with a rainbow training somewhere you don't want during the beach section, then you can move it somewhere where else? You pretty much always want to grab these when they come up. The horns increase your training bonus anywhere from 20 to 60% for two turns, so you get a metric crap ton of stat points. Always use these at the start and the middle of the beach since you're there for four turns. These braces also increase training bonuses for particular trainings. You can use these at the beach once you know what you're going to train for for even more stats. This good luck charm also decreases the fail rate to 0% in a pinch. The only thing from this list we want to worry about is the gold horseshoe. You can only get three of these, and you'll want to save them for the end segment and use them before every race in the Twinkle series. Phew. Now that we know about items, you can get your 60 points from races. You might think that you can stop doing races now, but no. You see, the reward for this scenario is a special skill that gets better with the amount of races you win in the scenario. Generally, what you want to do this entire scenario is race once, race again, then either rest or train and repeat that process. If you do more than three races in a row, then you open yourself up for the possibility of injury. Just make sure you're doing races your horse girl can handle. To reiterate, these are between short distance, middle distance, mile, long distance, and dirt races. Check out the training guide if you don't know what you're looking for. I'm a real YouTuber. Rival races will also sometimes appear, and the benefit to winning these is getting a random skill hint related to the strategy you race them in. So like a hint for a skill for a long distancer if it was a long distance race. Sometimes you might even get sales to get items. You should take advantage whenever possible. What you really want to look out for is the inheritance moment and the beach, which happens once you get to 12 in this counter up here of the last two parts of the scenario. In case you forgot, this is where you're going to be using up a lot of those items since the beach gets you boost during training anyway, especially if you're on a bad run because you don't know what you're doing, but I've never experienced that, no siree. At the end of the scenario, instead of the URA finals, you get to experience the much more manly sounding Twinkle series. Have you ever wished that Uma Musume used Mario Kart scoring systems? Well, today is your lucky day. Don't forget to use your golden horseshoes for race bonuses and you should be fine through this. Have fun getting all those trophies, bye!